Hey guys, it's Stephen Gates here from MyPLCTraining.com. I've got another video for you today to help you become a confident PLC programmer and a confident automation professional. And this video is all about Studio 5000 Logics Emulate. So this software is really useful not only for learning to program PLCs, but also for real world uh, programming, testing, and simulation of automation projects. In fact, I use it regularly for my engineering job when I need to test new PLC logic or even test old PLC logic to see uh, if certain sequences work with the existing PLC logic. So it's a great tool. The Logics Emulate software is part of the Studio 5000 suite which is where Logic's designer comes from, is that Studio 5000 suite. And it's actually included with the professional level license of Studio 5000 Logic's designer. Uh, so I'm going to bring it up here. This software is close to $2,000 if you purchase it um, by itself. And again, if you don't have access to this, I've said this in some of my other videos, about some of the Rockwell software, but if you don't have access to this but you would like access to it along with some PLC training help courses and support from me and the MyPLCTraining.com team, MyPLC Training Academy is for you, definitely. We offer not only training courses but access to Rockwell software. So if you are interested in that, check out the link below for my PLC Training Academy and we'd love to get you in the membership and help you become a confident PLC programmer. So with that being said, let us dive into this training and so first of all we'll just take a look at the software here. So as you can see, Emulate is supposed to look something like a Control Logics rack. PLC rack. You can expand this or or make it smaller, minimize it. But basically you have slots lined up here from 0 to 8 and then if you expand this it goes all the way to 16. So you can insert modules into each of these racks and there's only a couple different options there which we'll talk about more later. Most likely you'll see these two modules one is for RS Links, and the other says it's unknown, but it's for RS Links Enterprise. So the, the first one, the RS Links module, is, allows you to connect RS Links to the emulator rack and eventually to an emulate controller uh, so that you can download your program from Logics Designer into the controller, go online with the controller, etc. The other module is for Factory Talk Links, formerly known as RS Links Enterprise, and this is the communication software inside Factory Talk View uh, that is used for your HMI applications to communicate with a PLC. And you can use it to connect your HMI application to the Logics Emulate software, so that's really cool. So what I like to do before I start using the Logix Emulate software to create uh, programs and test out programs is I like to get these two modules out of the way. Because most of the projects I work on, the controller is in slot zero, um, where this is, and sometimes another controller in slot one. Um, that's just the projects I'm working on. So. For me, it's handy to get these out of the way in their where they are in their default positions. So to get rid of this guy, or to move it, I should say, we're going to open up RS Links, which is here in the background. And we go to com Communications, Configure Drivers. And from there, we're going to click this pull-down menu and choose from the available driver types. We'll choose Virtual Backplane. So this is the one we need. This is the driver that allows us to communicate to a Logix Emulate controller. So we'll click Add New, and we'll just stick with the default name for now. Click 
click OK. And now here's the important part. So by default, it wants to put it in slot 0. So we want to move that. We can move it wherever we want. I like to move it all the way out of the way to slot 16. So click OK. And now you should see this VBP virtual backplane driver running. And you can see it here in the RS Who window. So I'm going to click Close now. And then we'll bring back up Logix Emulate. And you can see it is now cleared out slot 0, moved it to here. So clearing out slot 0 is the most important part for the projects I work on, again, because the controller is almost always in slot 0. But if you also want to clear out slot 1, we can do that too. So let's look at that. And to do that, we're going to open up Factory Talk View. And I have a project open here. And so what you want to do is, if you've got a, a project already created, which I'm not going to go into that in this lesson. Uh, we do have training on that if you're interested. But the project should already have a Factory Talk Links or RS Links Enterprise server set up. And so I've opened it up here. That's where we're at here. And the 1789A17 backplane is the virtual backplane in Studio 5000 Logix Emulate. So this is basically the equivalent of the virtual backplane driver we set up in RS Links Classic. So this is the RS Links Enterprise version of that, or Factory Talk Links, same thing. So right click, choose Properties, and you can see it has slot 0, 1 chosen. And you may have the auto configure setting um, checked there. If you do, just uncheck that. And then we'll choose from our options here, we'll choose slot 15. Click OK. And then we'll bring up Logix Emulate again. And you can see that moved it out of the way to slot 15. I'm not sure why it says unknown, but that is the module that is dedicated to Factory Talk Links. OK. So one more thing we need to do to the Logix Emulate rack before we download a project to it is obviously add a controller. So right click the empty slot you want to add the controller in. In our case, we're going to use slot 0. Click Create. Next, we need to choose which type of module we want. You can do a 32-point input-output simulator. I never use that. The controller is what we want. Click OK. And then we're just going to click Next on here. Go with the defaults. This one is important. You want to make sure the version that you are using here corresponds to the version you're using in Studio 5000 Logix Designer, so the programming software. Um, so I am using version 30, so I'm going to stick with version 30. Click Next, and then we have one final prompt where we click Finish. And you can see it has added the controller to the rack there in slot 0. It's loading up and still loading, thinking about it a little bit. OK, looks like we're good to go. It's still in the power up uh, mode, but we'll be able to see it in Logix Designer shortly. So the next step is to bring up Logix Designer. So I've got Studio 5000 open here. And let's go ahead and create a new project. OK, so make sure you have Studio 5000 Logix Emulate Controller selected. And we'll give a name to it. We'll just say Logix Emulate. Next. And this is where you choose your version. All I have right now available is version 30. So I'll just click Finish. OK, our Logix Designer program has opened up. And we're just going to open the main routine and create a very simple logic that we can test in the emulate controller. So I usually go with an XIC and an OTE. 
and we'll create some fake tags here. Fake input, fake output. Okay, we'll click save. And then uh, we'll, one thing we want to do before we download it is to verify that the controller is in slot zero. So by default, it should go to slot zero. If it's not in slot zero, click the controller properties up here. And you can change the slot here. So keep it at slot zero, click OK. Try that again. Okay, so now we are going to attempt to download this to our Logix Emulate controller. So we'll click the Communications tab and go to Download. And it brings up our Who Active window. So if we go look at our ABVBP driver, which is the virtual backplane driver we set up in RS Links Classic, then we should see Studio 5000 Logix emulate emulator R30.12. So the 30 is the version of the controller. And again, that represents this controller in slot 0. You can see it's in slot 0. You can see the RS Links server is in slot 16, where we moved it earlier. All right, so let's click the controller, and then we will choose download. Click download again. OK, the download completed. And now we're going to change this to run mode. Change controller to run mode, yes. OK, so it says it's running. And we can toggle this fake input. Control T does that, but I'll just show you here. Toggle bit. And sure enough, it turns on the fake output. I'll toggle it off. Fake output turns off as well. All right, that's it, folks. Hopefully you learned something from this and enjoyed this PLC training on Studio 5000 Logix Emulate. If you want more opportunities to learn to use and practice PLC programming with not only Studio 5000 Logix Emulate, but Logix Designer and Factory Talk View, uh, be sure to check out our training membership called My PLC Training Academy where you get access to high quality training courses, the Rockwell software licenses, and support from me and the team. And we will help you become a confident automation pro. That is our goal here. So check it out. Hope this was helpful for you. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.